welcome to Josh's House of Nerd podcast. Hello, Nerd Nation. I'm Josh, and I welcome you to the podcast. Grab a cold evergreen goblet of blue milk and make yourself comfortable here at my House of Nerd. Tonight on the podcast, we are on the topic for the month, which is movies that are mind-bending. And tonight's movie is the 2002 meta-comedy drama directed by Spike Jones and written by, or sorry, directed by Spike Jones and written by Charlie Kaufman. Yep, I said that right. Starring Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep, and Chris Cooper with Kara Seymour, Brian Cox, Tilda Swinton, Ron Livingston, and Maggie Gyllenhaal in supporting roles. Kaufman-based adaptation on his struggles to adapt Susan Orland's 1998 nonfiction book, The Orchid Thief, while suffering from writer's block. It involves elements adapted from the book, plus fictitious elements, including Kaufman's twin brother, also credited as a writer for the film, and a romance between Orlean and LaRoche. It culminates in completely invented elements, including versions of Orlean and LaRoche, three years later after the events of The Orchid Thief. Let's talk about this movie, because this is an interesting movie, <laughs> to say the least. Well, yeah, I keep talking, Josh, because I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sure you do. And stuff. I do not like this movie. <laughs> oh no. Again, another Kaufman fan we've created. Yeah. Well, and then uh this is another Spike Spike Jones film. And uh um, What other Spike Jones did we watch? We've done her. Her. But Which you, I liked her. You liked her. And we did yeah. uh didn't we do Did we do Being John Malkovich? No, not yet. we haven't done it yet. Not yet. Okay. I, then we must have just been talking about that off off air or something. Yeah, yeah. That's a. I've seen that movie and that's a that's a definitely one to talk about as well. Um, I I didn't hate this movie, but it's definitely a movie that I was going. How long is this? You know, I kept <laughs> thinking to myself the whole time. How what? You know, now I'm not gonna lie and say at the very end, I it didn't pick up for me a little bit. You know, um. But the whole the whole idea of him, you know, him going back and forth between, you know, uh, figuring out this roadblock of this movie and then going in between his thoughts and, you know, the book, you know, from the perspective of the book that he's trying to adapt. It was it's all I mean, it's a coffin movie from what I've found now. It's it's it feels it's it's. It feels scattered sometimes, even though I know it all is there purposefully, you know, it makes sense in some ways once you think about it a little bit, but it's still, I don't know. It was still felt it's still harder to follow <laughs> in some ways, you know, it's, um, but coffin movies are known for that. I mean, I, I don't, I, I haven't found a coffin movie. I don't think I've liked yet. Even if, I mean, I will, if you want a spoiler about John Malkovich, I think it's just okay. How dare you? How dare you, sir? It's just, it's got some just cool okay. stuff. It's got some cool stuff and it's an interesting th- th- plot and thought, uh-huh. but I'm going to go as far as that. You're not allowed to have a different opinion than mine. No, I'm not. Work. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I... I do enjoy the Kaufman. Yeah, this was, I hadn't seen this one before and I'm kind of sad. I hadn't seen this one before. Cause I, I really like, I, I have, I don't, I haven't really seen a Spike Jones movie that I haven't really enjoyed that I know of. Mm-hmm. Um, you got uh, her three Kings where the wild things are uh, Malkovich. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm trying to think of another one. If there's, um, it's kind of it's kind of what I got. I think he did. T- he, he worked on the Tenacious D movie. I forgot about that. The complete masterworks of the Tenacious D and and the music videos for him. So I I really enjoyed getting to know or getting to watch another film from a director I really 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 like, and then having mind the mind bending genre so well captured. Uh, because this was mind bending. The, the, the cut scenes where he's talking to himself, um, the one where he's, 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 he's on the bed. He's got like a fully clothed version of him on the bed and the other ones at the typewriter. And they're having this weird conversation back and forth. I, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's bonkers. It's a bonkers film. 
I, yeah. I'm glad it fit the brief then. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a yeah, it's a bonkers movie. My goodness. <laughs> I mean, okay. So, what do you think of uh, either one of you? What do you think of Cage's uh, performance since he's playing a double row role? I think he did an excellent. Oh, fantastic! Job. He did. He's he's fantastic in this movie. He can act, man. When he when he's given parts like this, wow, he can act his pants off. You know, it's just got to be a right role. When he wants to be a crazy man, you know, he can be that too. Um, you know, and wacky and bonkers. But I think he, this is, you know, I may not have liked the mo- overall movie, but the performances in this movie are amazing. They're yeah, very, like very well done. His, uh, his ability to play two different people with different mannerisms in the same movie. Yeah. And, and they're distinct. They're so distinct that you, that you, that I immediately felt they were twins. I didn't see the same actor doubled kind of like, you know, multiplicity. It's just, he's the, you know, he's kind of over the top, but playing the same character. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not really taken, you're not really taken into the movie and thinking that these are different people. You're seeing the actor play, you know, the same uh, different parts. Um, right. kind of the same, kind of the same with, uh, um, uh, well, I'm trying to think of the other movie that, that does this a lot. Uh, Eddie Murphy's movie. Like you're still seeing Eddie Murphy. <laughs> he's not, he's not really disappearing into the role. You're seeing caricatures as played by Eddie Murphy. Like um, Nutty Professor. Yeah. yeah things Nutty things Professor, like that. Yeah. 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 And it's like, uh, the interesting thing about Cage is, I actually felt like when he, more than halfway through the movie, I'm not thinking of Cage playing two characters. I'm thinking of them as two distinct characters. Yeah. yeah. I can I, see I, that. I think this was a definitely like, and he did uh, an Academy award winning. Performance oh, he almost won him. too. Yeah. He got, he got beat out by the pianist. Wow. Which, that... Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Like I, it's not like I followed it at the time. This was, this was, was two thousand two. Yeah. So I was, I was in high school and I didn't care <laughs> about, about the, uh, the Academy Awards, but his performance in this, I think is one of Nicolas Cage's best performances in my opinion. Very good for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think it, it highlights the fact that he, uh, he's not a slouch of an actor like yeah he's been in he's been in rough movies and movies that didn't do well and had rough scripts but he himself is not a slouch of an actor yeah he gives us all it seems absolutely no i yeah i agree with that and this movie just proves it right there you know if anybody had any doubt that nicholas cage can actually act here you go here it is and i i would agree with you crit i felt like it was two distinct characters as well and and stuff that's i i and thank goodness it was he did really well because he is on he is on camera a lot i mean you know he is the main guy and if the rest of it wasn't great you know who is his his the performance of his of donald is the brother's name yeah donald Donald. his performance of donald reminded me of him in face off (laughs) If you remember oh. face off at all, oh, yeah. sort of, I can see that. Sort of, like a little bit, just the just the the Wasn't disconnect quite from reality, as unhinged. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I mean, nobody could be quite as unhinged as Nicolas Cage in Face Off. Um, but it, it's still like that was that was probably the closest character I've seen him play to to this, where it was very much you could just feel the difference in in who he was. Like it was just interesting. Yeah, I mean, and the. The part that it's like he's playing Kaufman's twin brother that doesn't exist in reality, like never existed. So it's like, it's like this whole story references itself constantly. And then it Uh. also uh, has elements of fantasy in it, but the fantasy is usually is late in the story when it comes to the plot line, except for the twin brother character. Where it's a constant. Yeah. Where it's a constant fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, Kaufman. Kaufman is just Kaufman is Kaufman. Like I don't know. It's different, yeah. I don't know what you can really. I mean the really the part that, that always gets me giggling is when um, Brian Cox playing uh, the lecturer is like, and don't ever 
do voiceover and immediately for like the rest of the movie until the very end, there's no voiceover. Like all the voiceovers cut out. And I just, it just makes me giggle every time. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Um, and I mean, Charlie Kaufman's still alive, so we could get more, more stuff like this. coming. Yeah, out. I hope so. I mean, like I like, um, I'm thinking of ending things more than an adaptation. Um, and Kaufman directed and wrote that one. So like, right. It'll yeah. be interesting to see where he goes. Like from my, just from my perspective, it'd be interesting to see where he goes in his next uh, version or whatever he does next. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's come a long way from, from adaptation to sunshine of a spotless mind, which I think was after adaptation. I want to say, I think so. Yeah, because you had you had Malkovich first, then I want to say adaptation, then Sunshine on Spotless Mind, and then obviously his most recent one was was I'm thinking of ending things. But like it's interesting to see like the differences between just him writing and then directing what he's actually written. So I was I was surprised with this movie how often it did um, reference itself, how it was. It it made there you know I didn't catch on to that at first, um, and then I started going oh wait wait the whole oh, hell I was like oh my hell when it, when that scene happened when he was like when it opened and like all of a sudden like the movie opened up and it was showing like the beginning of the world and all that yeah. stuff and then later on he actually like writes that down or says it into his tape recorder I'm just like oh that's where it keyed me and this is he's talking about the movie that we're watching right now. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah, no, he is. <laughs> and and that's the interesting thing. It's like this smacks of memento in a sense that the things that happen later in the movie are represented earlier in the movie. And if you're not paying attention, it's easy just to get kind of lost on what's happening. I think it's just a random, what the hell's going on. I really don't like this movie. And then at the end, the funny thing, <laughs> this is a great thing. So, the whole third act is literally when Donald gets involved in the script, which is literally the taking the advice of the lecturer of make your ending uh, great and people won't care about the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I could totally see, like, if you're just not paying attention, you're just kind of, you know, halfway sleeping through the movie that in the third act, it gets interesting and, and exciting. And so you're, you're kind of going after it and, and you're watching it. And then, you're like, oh, well, actually, this it wasn't that bad, you know, because the end of the movie had, you know, more action and stuff like that. And that's literally them injecting the drama and action into the story because the book doesn't have any of that. It, it doesn't have a, an ending. It doesn't have a resolution. And I, I don't know. It's it's one of those things, like, if you're really paying attention, like you're trying to take notes for this podcast, um, for example, uh, you just, you're seeing the references and then the references and then the layers and you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, this is, it's like trying to put together a, a puzzle about when things happened and what he decided to actually put in the script. Like you're examining the screenplay as you're watching the movie because the movie's asking you to examine the screenplay because it's trying to show you all of the emotions that went into making the screenplay. And then you're trying to figure out what really happened versus what really didn't happen. And sometimes it's obvious and sometimes it's not obvious, right? And it's like, if you didn't know Kaufman, you'd think he would actually have a twin brother. You know, you'd have to go research to find out that he didn't or doesn't. Right. And, and I did realize all of that. It still didn't make it all that much better for me, but yeah. I still, I still did. I mean, I was paying attention and I did realize that that was going on. Uh, you know, I would go along with the, I understand what you're saying from the, where he, they said, you know, make crap up, you know, like at the very end, yeah. uh, Brian Cox here. I did notice that that you know, all of a sudden is like, Oh, you know, and it did, the ending did like pick it up a little bit, you know, uh, which is really the, what I'm, I know that's what they were intending to do. Right. It, you know, well, on our scale of like art and roller coaster, this is definitely on the art side. And so, Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's Heart it's roll. it's cerebral. It's you know, <laughs> it's a bit depressing. <laughs> you know, the only reason that it's actually an interesting story at the end is because they injected the interesting. Yeah, yeah. The rest of it, it would have been like if it was all about him the entire time, which a lot of the movie is. 
about how he's what a fat. Uh, well, it's about writer's block, right? It's about it trying is. to to uh, trying to take uh, what was supposed to be a simple job and suddenly finding out that it's not simple and you're trying to figure out how to actually make it work, which on some level, not at the writer's level, but on some level I totally empathize with because I've been in that situation when it comes to like developing a program or something like that, where like, it seems like it's easy. And then you just get blocked by all the, either the possibilities you could do or what you can't do, what you figure out you can't do. And so like the anxiety that he's feeling as he's kind of trying to figure out how to complete the screenplay on time and he's behind and people are on him, man, I've felt that. Yeah, I have too. <laughs> it's, it's, a, um, it gets a little scary at times. I, I could feel that, you know, that tension that he was feeling as well. Like you're, you're saying that you felt before it is hard. And, uh, especially when you know, you've got a deadline and, or you're over your deadline, like he was and, and you got to crank something out. But uh, you know, that did add tension, I guess. Go ahead. So I I was inspired after watching adaptation and started and looked into was looking into more of Kaufman's stuff because I knew about a lot of his stuff. Um, but I found out he wrote a book in 2020 called Ant Kind. Um, okay. And I started reading that book and 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 let me stress started. It is a 720 page book. <laughs> That uh, wow. he he says un, in Wikipedia quotes that he wanted to write it so as to be unfilmable, and is itself about an impossible movie. So I started reading this book, and it immediately, like the feeling you get reading the book, and and I I recommend at least trying to read it because <laughs> I'm I'm like a uh, fifty or sixty pages in, and it's bonkers. Um, but the feeling I got reading that book was the same exact feeling I got by the time I was done with adaptation, the, the, the same kind of like, it's not quite melancholy because you, you're, you hit it on the head crit where you're talking about the depressive feel. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not quite melancholy. It's not quite full on depression because they still have that kind of like, Oh, by the way, you know, here's Donald. He picks you up at the end. Um, like that absurd it's kind of like an absurd melancholy. How's that? Yeah. I like that. It's a good description. Because I, I think that's exactly what I felt by the end of adaptation and what I feel reading ant kind, which I don't know that I'm going to be able to finish to be brutally honest. Oh, it's, it's just, it's, it's a heart. It's like, it's a cerebral read. Mm. And, and with that in mind, like you've really got to, you've got to dedicate time for it. Um, I'm trying to think of, What's his face? I, I can't remember his, his name for the life of me, but there's another there's another author I like that has that same kind of melancholy and, and depressive feel. Um, but his books are just as cerebral where I, I can't like it, it takes a while to get through because they're they're hard to read. And, and I think adaptation is kind of if it wasn't in movie format, like it, it'd be something that I would probably struggle to get through just because of, of yeah, that that's feeling. Fair. So yeah, it was a long way to, to, to go to say that, but, um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative that this is in movie format. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can agree that I appreciate it, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate I'm... myself for watching it, but if I watched it again, I might hate myself. That's I the... mean, you, yeah, this one's not quite as rewatchable as uh, some of other Kaufman stuff, I think, or at least for me. I, I agree. I, I can rewatch Malkovich. I can rewatch Sunshine. I don't know that I can rewatch this one. And I don't know that I can rewatch. I can think of, I'm thinking of ending things. Uh, I have, and it's worth it. But yeah, that's just okay. Because <laughs> it, it, I, I think that one's so thick that it's hard to get everything on one watch. That's true. And very, I think with true. adaptation, I don't feel like I missed that much on this watch. So I don't feel like I really have to go back and watch it again for a third time. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I can, I can see that. I can agree with that. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, yeah, I don't even want to attempt it. Even if there's a lot of good stuff, I, I struggled. I, I mean, I struggled to get through this one when I'm sitting here going, okay, when he goes to New York and I'm fast forwarding it, cause I just see him traveling on a plane and I know there's probably back and forth and I'm watching it. I mean, it's a two hour, what, two and a half hour movie? 
two hour movie yeah two hour two hour movie yeah and it felt longer even with me like fast forwarding and because i knew it was parts that they weren't talking he was just traveling so i would just try to speed it up a little bit but it's like listening to an audible audiobook on 1.5 speed kind of kind of i was i was a little bit actually (laughs) doing that a little bit uh no i I I liked adaptation I would not, it still does not knock out being John Malkovich out of, out of the top coveted Kaufman spot, I guess, so to speak. Being John Malkovich still, I think, in my opinion, is, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that more. I'm not saying it's a better film. I'm just saying I enjoy it more. Yeah, I think, I think Kaufman films are like, if they really resonate with you, you can get entertainment out of rewatching. And, but there's not a whole lot of like, just, this is an enjoyable thing just to sit and watch. You know, just like just to sit down and watch, unless you're like like actively studying and trying to you know kind of dig for stuff, um, which I, some people enjoy. But like this isn't necessarily like a you know, let's put on on a Sunday and you know sit back and enjoy watching adaptation. You know, it's it's not really, uh, it's not really what it's what's what it's looking to do. Which is interesting because like he's an interesting writer in that he does these cerebral things, but from like a purely entertainment sense like you it's a one and done you don't get repeats what repeat watches out so like as a purely capitalistic product maybe it's not good because you're not really going to go back and re-rent it you're not going to you know uh keep your um your subscription because they have adaptation you might because they have like the full marvel cinematic universe because that's just popcorn entertainment you can go back and watch it and just have a good time um but like adaptation isn't going to keep you around because once you've seen it or at least gotten what it's got, you're not necessarily going to go back and watch it again unless you're like maybe a film student or something. Or a masochist. Masochist? Masochist. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Masochist is someone that uh, subjects themselves to moss. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Make sure that makes it into the podcast. I mean, it ain't going to get edited out, so that's no a challenge. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you. There's not much I edit out these days, just because it's like, except for maybe a swear word here or there. But you know, whenever we drop like an f bomb, John. Yeah, which is funny. <laughs> I, I think I'm the only one that hasn't sworn on here. I haven't said the f bomb on here. No. Oh. And well, stuff. We're the only two that haven't. Yeah, I've I've sworn though. I just haven't said the f bomb. <laughs> okay, John. I'm yeah, just it's kidding. just me. Uh, <laughs> just me. Uh, you made sure you edited that out, right? I haven't got to it yet, but I'm getting. I'm I'm actually on that video right now, <laughs> editing it. <laughs> I made sure to put a big note in the folder. Edit this film. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, I so, don't really have anyways, anything else to say about this one. Really, that surprises me as uh, you know, being as deep it is. I mean, but I don't either, since I don't really like it all that much. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> the the acting is amazing on almost every, on everybody's part, really. And I really enjoyed uh, Brian Cox's uh, part. Uh, yeah, I thought he was great. Uh, the screenplay is very good and just the the fact that uh spike jones was able to to make that a real film is a testament to everybody involved yeah uh, their talents it's just you know there's not as many themes like i'm just i'm not a writer so there's just not as many themes i can just kind of like delve into and i'm fascinated by it's more like like oh that's an it's from my perspective it's a neat trick like it's a neat storytelling trick, but I can't really like, I'm not really emotionally invested in the trick. Mm-hmm. Unlike some of his later movies. I, I can agree with that. And I can understand that. I don't under, I don't get these movies, but I can understand that. And stuff. John, do you have anything else to say? Nope. I, I think I've, I've covered okay. what I wanted to say. All right. Let's go to ratings then. Um, I'll start mine out. I gave it a four out of 10 and stuff. Um, scathing. Nice. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, if I gave it a five, that would mean I thought it was just okay. And I might think about rewatching. So I had to give it a four. I didn't, but, no. but I did, you but I didn't hate it, scale. Yeah. but I didn't, but I didn't hate it. So, you know, that's why it's got a four. All right. 
That's uh, I don't know that I'd watch this with my mom because there are some awkward scenes. So <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> <laughs> some really awkward scenes. Super so, awkward. I don't know that I would watch this with my mother. Fair enough. All right. And I'll give this an eight out of ten. Like I said, it it is a fascinating movie, but it's just not like it's it's really well put together and it's really well executed. And it's a hard movie to execute. You know, it's not a paint by numbers movie. And so that's why I gave it such a high rating. But it's not a 10 out of 10 because I just don't I don't resonate with it that much. Outside of some vague emotions around, you know, kind of writer's block or trying to get stuff done within a deadline, it's not it's not really doing a whole lot for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Well, let's go on to our picks then for uh, next time. And if anybody else out there knows or heard our last podcast, our topic for the next coming month is movies with planes. And that has to be either takes place on a plane for most of the movie or a part of the movie. And uh, I'm the one that gave that um, kind of in honor of the new Top Gun movie. that just came out and thought it would be fun to do something like that. So here are my three picks for that theme all right first i have to ask so you don't sneak the nicholas cage movie in there we're not counting helicopters as planes right no okay all right go 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 forth is there a nicholas cage movie that's got helicopters in it i mean it's one we've already done oh you're talking about oh you're talking about firebirds oh yeah why would you put firebirds back in we've already done it once i i don't know just oh, okay out of love for nick nicholas cage i guess <laughs> right, yeah i kind of baffled me there for a minute we should do a nicholas cage month there's enough movies for it i think i'm sure <laughs> all right here we go first one the good the bad and the really bad number two this movie takes you to a danger zone and number three this movie is an adaptation, kind of. So you got the good, the bad, and the really bad. You got this movie takes you to a danger zone. And this movie is an adapt an adaptation, kind of. I like the third one. Yeah. Let's go with number three. <laughs> I was hoping you would pick number two, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> So revenge for skipping out on my picks last week. That's right. Yeah. All right. So number one that you didn't go with the good, the bad, and the really bad is Con Air. So I did go with the Nicolas Cage <laughs> you movie did there. Have a Nicolas Cage, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, I kind of went back and forth on that one quite a bit. That one got swapped in and out with Snakes on a Plane, but you know, <laughs> that's just a fun movie. Uh, number two. And you're going to know why I would say I wish you would have picked this just because it's a fun movie. This movie takes you to a danger zone, which was Iron Eagle, which we have talked about on this movie before. <laughs> oh, this we almost had it on. Almost yep. had Iron Eagle on here. <laughs> and number two, you're gonna, you might kick yourself when you hear what it is. The Moose movie is an adaptation, kind of, airplane. <laughs> it's the actual movie, Airplane. <laughs> Because it is kind of an adaptation of a movie called Zero Hour. Just, they made it funnier. <laughs> All right. I'm fine. I am A-OK with watching Airplane again. I love Airplane. I think that, oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, lots of, yeah. You know, I mean, something we can do f- fun is maybe, you know, kind of think of what your favorite gags are in this movie. I mean, I love these kind of movies. I'm a big Naked Gun fan and. Which also has Leslie Nielsen. This is his first comedic thing, so I'm excited for it. All right. So, yeah. Sounds good. Anyways, and I'm excited to hear what your guys' picks for this genre are going to be, because there's quite a few movies out there with airplanes in them, so. Mine's just going to be snakes on a plane three times. Snakes on a plane three Get these mother effing snakes on this mother effing plane. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and then right. and then the podcast will just be us cutting that clip over and over over and over again maybe we could actually samuel jackson out there just bleep that no <laughs> uh i i just barely recently saw that movie i i actually don't mind it it's pretty it's it's fun it's it's a little it's better than i thought it was going to be even though it's still what you think it is 
anyway. All right. Good podcast. And to everybody out there listening, thank you for supporting our channel. And as always, may you be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from all of us here at Joshua's House of Nerd. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. For more nerdy awesomeness, please like and subscribe and check 